Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to the videos. Another paid request. This time for Tim. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested, requesting any type of videos or topics or reactions, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is, like I said, for Tim. And it's for a film called Far From Home, which I had never heard of before, but it is on YouTube for free. It's from 1989. And the cast is kind of interesting because. At least for me, it's a lot of recognizable people. There's Drew Barrymore, of course, from E.T., Firestarter, we're going to be in Charlie's Angels, among other films. Matt Frewer plays her dad. I remember him. He was the Max Headroom and all those commercials, and there was a short-lived TV show, and for the most part, he was selling Coca-Cola, a lot of commercials. If you type in Max Headroom, it's like a electronic figure that kind of have these static movements and uh, very 80s I'll say that <laughs> I also remember him he was the neighbor in Honey I Shrunk the Kids Rick Moranis' neighbor who was the father of the other kids that got shrunk he was the cop who helped our lead guy the Taking of Beverly Hills which is a very fun action movie uh, other people in it uh, Richard Masser, who was the dad, Corey Haim's dad in License to Drive. He was one of the adults in Stephen King's It. He was in John Carpenter's The Thing. He was the guy that very prevalent with the dogs, and protective of the dogs. Clark. That character. He's been quite a few stuff. Uh, you also have other teenagers. Anthony Rapp. I'm like, I know he looks familiar. He was in Adventures in Babysitting. He played the character of Daryl, where Elizabeth Shue has the two kids, but then you have the friend that joins the kids. Ethy Rapp is the friend, Daryl, who, and then the, the four of them get in these crazy hijinks in the, the city. Fun movie, Adventures in Babysitting. And then you have Andras Jones. He was a number in Elstree 4, the Dream Master. He played Lisa Wilcox's brother. In that movie, uh, you also have another. You have a few others. Person that owns this trailer park is Susan Tyrell. I remember her. She played kind of a quirky character in Angel, and the sequel Avenging Angel. I I don't think she was in the third one. If she was, I don't remember. She might have been. I, I think she was on in the first two. And then you have another lady, and I forget her name, but she played John Candy's wife. And Summer Rental, which is a personal favorite of mine. And also Jennifer Tilly, who are going to be in Bride of Chucky and those later Chucky movies. She's in this. So, a lot of recognizable people in this movie. <laughs> and the story is Drew Barrymore is with her dad. Her dad's a reporter. They went on this vacation to visit all these cities. They're going back home to L.A., but they run out of gas. They run out of gas. They're stuck in the middle of nowhere. And you have the gas station owner, Richard Master, who's a bit of a hippie-like guy who says he doesn't believe in money and all this, and he'll try to help. Oh, Dick Miller, actually. That's another guy. He's the sheriff. Dick Miller, who was in Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Been a lot of stuff. So Dick Miller, character actor, who Joel Dante used a lot of in his movies, he's the sheriff. So it's Matt Frewer and Drew Barrymore having to stay at this trailer park while they try to find gasoline. Oh, and there happens to be a killer on the loose. Go figure. And a chunk of the film is Drew Barrymore meeting these two teens. One is Andres Jones, who much more of a creep and then Anthony Rapp who's much more of the nice kid her dealing with these two also you have this killer that's around kills one person by dropping a fan when the person's in the bathtub now right off the bat one of the things that I did not like about the film and overall I didn't like the film one of the reasons is the sexualization of Drew Barrymore is very, 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 very creepy. And it's even the cover. I'm not even going to show the cover of the VHS. 
because it's her barely any clothes on leaning back it's like one of those novels that Fabio not my friend Fabio but yo I could not believe it's not butter like that kind of romance novel here's the thing she's only 14 fucking years old she even says in the movie I'm not 12 I'm 14 yeah you're 14 years old and she was in real life 14 years old and there's points where Andres Jones is taking ice and rubbing it slowly on her arm as if it was fucking nine and a half weeks uh, there's points she's changing she's in her bra there's a point where she's making out and then Andres Jones tries to assault her as in you know try to forcefully and then Anthony Rapp comes in to helps her and saves her there's points that she's trying to be sultry and I'm like she's 14 years old this is disgusting in a way illegal I just and that's not against Tim I mean she wanted me to review it and thank you for that it's the filmmakers like no one in the movie thought you know what the way they're having her act and dressed like there's a bit where she's in the pool and she wanders around and watches people having sex in a trailer I mean, she's 14 fucking years old and so that right that that alone killed the movie for me I'm sitting there going this is just no 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 not for me no 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 And I know there's going to be people like trying to defend it. Well, there's 14 year olds that do that. They shouldn't. And that doesn't mean I need to see it. And there's still a person who's for I mean, think about. Remember how much shit, understandably, what was that Netflix movie? Tooties? It wasn't just Tooties that did that. There were films, in the, and I love the 80s, but there were films in the 80s that fucking did that too. And this is one of them. Far from home. And maybe because I'm of an older age, I just turned 40 recently, and I looked at life and things differently, as I looked at The Little Mermaid, and I'm like, wait a minute, she's not even, she's what, 16 years old? And, ugh, you know, same with, the, like, and then, like, she's 14 years old? Maybe because I'm old enough to be her dad? And so to me, it just, the whole thing's just fucking creepy. While she's doing all this, and then hanging out with Anthony Rapp, Matt Frewer is hanging out with this one lady who played, like I said, John Candy's wife in Summer Rental, and she's uh, roommates in this trailer with Jennifer Tilly. And then you have some really goofy scenes in this too. Like Andres Jones, whose mom, who runs the trailer park Susan Tyrell and then there's actually a little girl who is Andra's sister and Susan's daughter they have this goofy argument about fish sticks where the girl who not directed properly because she didn't give that good of a performance I didn't like these fish sticks I was supposed to do the other fish sticks and then Susan Tyrell is playing such a cartoonish character with a cigarette you don't like it See, I don't, I don't have a cigarette, but I don't know what I to use. Uh, I, I don't know what to use, but like, uh, I don't have it. It's not a cigarette, but I'll use the, the bottle cap, but like, you know, yeah. Well, you don't want to eat it and you don't want to like it. And then Andres Jones, oh, you better not eat this stuff, it's poison. Like, everyone's going on such full cylinders, it becomes goofy, it becomes fucking parody, it becomes silly. It just becomes like a, like a damn cartoon. 
So they all have this fighting argument. Andra's leaves. And then, spoiler alert, someone comes in with a fan, pushes it while she's in the tub and fries her. I'm going to spoilers from here on out. And apparently this girl, even by like the next morning or so, doesn't notice that her own fucking mom is dead. I'm sitting there going, so this girl, did you never have to use the bathroom? Usually the first thing in the bathroom, usually the first thing we do when we wake up. What's the first thing we do? Go to the bathroom. But probably not for this girl. I guess she didn't have to go potty or brush her teeth or wash her hands or anything. She didn't even... Okay. So it's like the next morning, or I think the next morning, may have been two days late. I don't know. Time's a bit weird in this movie. It's not until Jennifer Tilly comes in and notices and then calls the cops. And so they're all they're trying to find Andres Jones because they think he did it. And you don't care about that guy. He's just a piece of shit who treated his sister like shit. Tried to assault on a sexual front Drew Barrymore's character. And by the way, the actor was, what, 21 years old at this time? And you're trying to seduce and force a 14-year-old. Not in real life, because it's an actor, but the actor's doing their parts. But as a character, and yes, she's, she even says, because her birthday comes up in the movie, that she's 14. I'm 14, not 12. So, you have Andres Jones, who's a piece of crap character. Drew Barrymore at times seems kind of, I don't know, bubble-headed of a character. Like she'll write in her diary that her dad is wrong about this and that. I'm like, wrong about what? It seems he's been right so far. Or Drew's writing and crying. Laugh is just totally unfair. Ultimately, Richard Master helps Baffer get some gasoline. They're ready to leave. And I guess they're all getting in the same car? That's what it looked like. Now I'm trying to think, were they trying to... I guess they were all leaving in the same car. So it makes me wonder what was the car they got at the very end. Maybe it was a different car. I don't know. But anyway. Or maybe it was someone else's car. Ah, what the fuck. Who cares? And then... I... Th I think Drew Barrymore notices there's a fucking remote control car with lighters on it. And she doesn't think anything of it because she doesn't tell anybody anything. She's trying to see it and go, huh. And they know there's a killer around. Well, I guess at this point they assume it was Andres Jones. But anyway. Still, you don't even know where he's at. He hasn't been caught yet. So she doesn't think any of it. And they get in the, the radio in the car. And then the fucking... It's a toy remote control car that, because the killer punctured underneath the car at gasoline, and then his remote control of the car, the go under, the set on fire, and most, other than Jennifer Tilly, everybody else gets out. So Jennifer Tilly dies while this car explodes because of a fucky remote control of lighter. This just comes off as ridiculous, and it made me laugh. Like... I guess it's inventive. You know, instead of a stabbing or a shooting, there's a remote control car with fire <laughs> fucking lighters on it. So then they don't know what to do. Andres Jones gets found and arrested. Uh, Richard Master finds out it's actually, again, spoilers, Anthony Rapp, whose mother is literally on ice. Anthony stabs Richard Master, but he's still alive, is able to warn some people. Anthony Rapp has Drew Barrymore. Drew doesn't know this yet. She kisses him, and he's being all awkward and shy. 
she finds out that not only did he steal her diary, but he has a remote control, which reminds her of when that car blew up. And then Anthony Rapp, at times, it seems like he's trying to do a bit of like early Jane Spader, but not quite let, making it work. And there's a point that he's able to slit the Sheriff Dip Miller's throat. I can appreciate the environment he shot it in. That's one positive positive note I'll say is the windy, dusty environment gave a little bit of atmosphere to the ending, so it didn't feel as stale, as blank, as as boring as it would have been. It gave the, the environment a little bit of atmosphere and color to it, with the wind and the dust storm and things blowing everywhere. Drew and Anthony Rapp get on top of this tower. Matt is chasing after them. Richard Master arrived with a gun. Wounds. Anthony Rapp. He falls off. Falls to his death. You find out that Anthony Rapp's mother died and he tried to handle it. And I guess he needed money and someone would not give him money. And then this girl, this other lady, Susan Tyrell, wanted the rent and Pretty much the guy went crazy. Andres Jones is let out and he's going to hitchhike. And then Matt Frewer, Drew, and the other girl, the, the one from Summer Rental, they drive off. And Drew Barrow is having this narration about, you know, my dad, I always thought he was a deek, but he's right about things. But it's funny also that dad is so right, but he's also so wrong. I mean, what the fuck was he wrong about? That's my question to Drew Barrymore's character. What the fuck was he wrong about? Didn't seem like he was wrong about anything. Seemed like he was right to me. Now, once in a while, there's some decent shots by a cinematographer. Like the very end of the film, when the car is driving by, and you see kind of this dusk background. The sun behind the clouds. Like I said, the dusty, windy, little bit of atmosphere in the third act. It does have a recognizable cast. Matt Frewer, I thought, did a good job as the dad. Seemed like a good-hearted, endearing dad. And when he was strict, you understand why he was strict, because he wants to protect his daughter. Richard Master is kind of fun to see him as... Because I'm so used to him as, you know, the thing. Jack Carver's the thing. Playing a little bit more of a eccentric, hippie type of character. It was a nice little change of pace. And I like that actor, so... Uh, I liked his acting role. I liked Matt Frewer's acting role. So it was nice to see these other people in there. Uh, Andres Jones, I mean, that character was unlikable from the beginning to the end. Uh, so him hitchhiking didn't feel sorry for him. I mean, he did try to assault Drew Barrymore. Didn't apologize for it. Was a complete, utter creep and a terrible person. So I don't really care what happens to that character. Anthony Rapp, nice to see him in something else, because I just remember from Avengers of Babysitting. I think he did what he could for what the script he was given. Drew Barrymore, you know, I don't mind Drew Barrymore as an actress. This should have been played by an older person, though, and that again creates some uneasy view for the viewer, because again, this stuff has happened to. And they're really exploiting her sexuality when she's 14 years old. That's just... That's not right. There's no shooter toy. That's not fucking right. That's... I'm sorry. Movie can't win me over when you do bullshit like that. Other than that, uh, like I said, the... The mystery, it's one or the other... I think there's people, even without spoiling it, that people could probably predict what the outcome would have been or who the killer was. Because you have the one who's the very obvious red herring. So, if some red herring is so obvious, more than likely it's going to be the other way. My fur, I wish he had more to do at the end to save his daughter. Pretty much he goes up, gets his hand cut, and then Richard Master has to shoot the guy. I wish Matt Fur had a bit more to do. Uh, 
like I said, it's, it's really not that thrilling as a thriller. It's not that bit of a body count as that kind of movie. Uh, I guess if you just want to see this cast, yeah, a lot of them fairly early in their career, I guess that's really one of the noteworthy things about it. Like I said, uh, if some of the more goofy stuff, like the whole fish stick argument, and okay, we're going to kill this car with this remote control with lighters. I guess they had to have something so that she found the remote control, but I don't know if it was something else. That just seemed so... Ah, it just seemed goofy for me. I don't know how else to put it. And... I mean, Andres Jones, if if there's... There's never any moment that you felt sorry for the character. You felt like there's something else to this character. It was just very one-note creep. From the very beginning of trying to go with this 14-year-old. To ass assaulting her. To... There's never any moment to feel sorry for him. Even when Matt Furrer, when the, they're in the top car, he's like, I want to hear your side of the story. He just spits on Matt Furrer's face. I'm like, this character should get killed off too. Please? So that's why the, the very end of the film, when he's hitchhiking, just falls flat. I'm like, I hope a train, he's on a train track. I hope a train comes by and runs his ass over. So that leaves that a bit uh, lackluster. And then Drew Barrymore, just her performance is just—it's hard to pay attention because of just the way they're writing. And by the way, Tommy Lee Wallace helped write the film. Tommy Lee Wallace, the same guy that directed Halloween Three, that directed Steve Dean's It, which had Richard Master in it. I mean. If he wrote this film, did he write this film with the intention of a 14-year-old as the lead? And if so, why do you have, like, ice, like, trying to be seduction? And why write this kind of strip? Like, people could call me a prude all they want. To me, it's just... Sorry. It's, I don't know. The way it was handled, just icky to me. Maybe that's just me, but that's fine if it's just me. But with that said... It was nice to see the cast. They said Dick Miller and all this. Um, and it's fairly short. You know, it's 90, 80 to 90 minutes. So it, it didn't go on too long. But I mean, there's not, like I said, there's not a lot of th thrills for me. There's really no... The teeniest bit of action. Uh, I don't know. Didn't do much for me. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.